I've always wanted two things. Number one, I've always wanted to own the most exciting sports car I can comfortably afford. And number two, I've always wanted to have four children. I'm one of four myself and my wife was one of four grown up as well. So that's what we always wanted. However, these two things don't conventionally go together, do they? Enjoy those silly sports cars while you can. When kids come along, you won't be able to have them. <laughs> Rubbish. Because yes, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I have managed to do both of those two things. And for those of you who stick around till the end of this video, I reckon you might just be thinking that the car that you lust over makes more sense than the practical car you think you need to buy. Come on, let's get into it. My name's Ben, and welcome to Dad Cars. Daddy, can I turn the Maserati? There's enough space for everyone in the Maserati. You can go to Maserati. You can go to Maserati. You, Daddy. Ooh. Uh, you can go to Maserati. <laughs> So a father of four, what do you think his dad car is? An SUV? An MPV? No, it is this, Maserati Grand Sport. And in this video, I'm going to be answering the three main objections to the dad cars that I show on this channel. The three main grumbles that I occasionally get in the comment section below. And objection number one is perhaps the most obvious. You know, your family car needs to be practical. You need a giant 1,000 litre boot just to go food shopping for a family of four, don't you? Well, let's put that to the test, shall we? We are gonna test the practicality because that's what everyone moans about. You know, oh, I couldn't have a car like that with children. You know, you need to be able to put X, Y, and Z in a boot. So <laughs> we've got a full weekly shop for a family of four. <laughs> We're gonna try and fit in this car. I actually don't know if it's gonna work or not. definitely fit in this car. Do you reckon? Um, no, I haven't. I didn't think about that. Should have got bags, shouldn't I? See, practical. It's a practical dad car, isn't it? <laughs> right, sweetie, so we did it. We got all of that in the boot. Quite comfortably, I'd say. Well, Daddy was an absolute idiot, though, for not bringing some carrier bags, because we're... <laughs> When we get home, it's going to be a right pain getting all that out and into the house. But you're fortunate and you have a half drives and your other half has got a fairly practical car. Why do you need two practical cars? I don't know. <laughs> you don't, honestly. No idea. It's honestly absolutely fine. Look, I like a fast estate as much as the next guy. And if, you know, you were going to buy just one car to have for your family. You know, you have a half dozen drive or you know, you can't afford two cars at the moment, something like that. Yeah, I would say go for a cool estate. But if you don't need to, honestly, a car like this don't have to. is absolutely fine, isn't it? All right, Baldy, anyone can cram a food shop in the back of a coupe, but didn't you say that you could use this car with four children? Well, I was just getting to that, wait a second. The next thing I would like to do in this car with all four of my children is go to a car meet. So look, I've got all four of the pickles, <laughs> four children, in the Dadarati Grand Sport. <laughs> Girls, sometimes car meets can be a little bit... What's another word for that? Sometimes they can be a little bit boring. So what have we done today to try and make it a little bit more exciting? Yes, so you've you've yeah. wrote Alfred, Mini, uh, Ferrari, Aston Martin, Tesla, Alfa Romeo, and BMW. Yeah. Wow, that's a cool list. And I, I, you just did that list by yourself, right? I didn't actually help you, did I? No. I told you to put Ferrari down on it, didn't I? And each time we find one of those cars, we can tick it off, and then you can have a suite, right? And that's something that you can do at the next car meet that you're going to, and take them on your little ones with you. you know, make a little treasure hunt list of cars that you'd like to see, and then just give them a sweet each time. Or you know, it doesn't have to be sweets involved. But, but girls, what have we? <laughs> Are you taking a mick out of me? Is that what I sound like? Is it? Oh no. Oh girls, by the way, we've got to be a little bit naughty today because this car meet to actually get into the section where you exhibit your car. You've got to meet a criteria. So one of the criteria is your car's got to be 400 brake horsepower or more. And this car is only 400 PS. I think it's actually technically about 395 horsepower. 
So we got to try and sneak in. Before we get told off. Well, we, uh, hopefully we won't get told off. Hopefully they'll let us in. Yeah. Do you reckon they'll let us in? This one. This one we're going to right now. Well, I don't know what's louder, my car or you lot shouting in the back. Shh, that is far too loud. Goodness me. That is far too loud. I think you lot are louder than a Lamborghini. I need this car in sport mode just to drown you out. All right, girls, what do you reckon? Do you reckon they're going to let us in? Or are they going to say, ah, uh, excuse me, that's only 400 oh, yeah, PS. Been Not 400 horsepower. Yeah, we, me and you have been here before. Now, you've all been here before. Normally, when I come here, I take one, two. My first time. I think one time I've taken three of you. But this is the first time I've taken all four. Let's see if they're going to let us in, shall we? Oh, look, it's got a border terrier like we've got. Border terrier, where? Look, a border oh. terrier there, look. You yeah, see? Yeah. I got it. Have we got in? Dad, are we in? We're in. We got in, girls. Please. It's very busy Daddy today. The it's good to see that. Oh, no, maybe the police are here because we snuck in when we shouldn't have done. We should have cleaned the car, really, but oh, just look four children, YouTube channel to run. Oh, I haven't got time to do all of this and clean my car. Please. See, this is a good example as well. It's creeping around a car we park like this. See when it's super busy, it's the sort of time that people would assume that a robotized manual would be terrible, but it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. You've seen a BMW? There's loads of BMWs, isn't there? Oh, look, girls, RX7. Oh, see an Aston Martin. It's a Vanquish. What side? On the right side there, look. You see the blue one? Right, let's reverse into this one, shall we? Yeah. We can show everybody how easy it is to park a robotized manual, yeah? Oh, and I think we've got an E39 behind us as well, which is lovely. See, how easy was that? Not easy. Not easy. <laughs> so you ticked off BMW, yeah? This lovely E39 that we parked right next to. Come on, Shit, isn't it, like? yeah. well, well, girls, step aside, step aside, step over here. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Wow, girls, what do you think? I like it. Wow, that's a proper mini, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People are looking at our car. Yeah, because they're wondering how we fit all of you in it. Right, girls, is that fun? No. <laughs> well, would it be more fun if there was colouring in and yeah. other games and things to play? Yeah. A nice little, yeah? So in our section, we'll make sure that it's extra, extra fun for everybody, yeah? I must just say the marshals here at the Port Soho and Car Meets do an incredible job and I highly recommend Port Soho and Car Meets for anybody who's looking to come out and do something. It costs absolutely nothing, obviously. And obviously if I had an MPV or an SUV, I could have parked in with all the spectators and then just walked in with the kids. Could have done that, but come on, it's pretty cool that you can actually go into a car meet when you've got an excited dad car like this. But this brings us on to objection number two. And this is a big one. Safety. A completely valid objection and you know, this is why I'm very fortunate that my wife drives so we have got a semi-modern SUV that, you know, that she uses as the primary family car and it's why in my parent focused car reviews you know, I always try to mention NCAP safety ratings where possible not many car reviewers do that but I've proven on this channel that it's not as simple as the large SUVs are the safest things on the road you know I recently reviewed an Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio and I pointed out how that achieved an NCAP safety rating for adult occupants, which was actually 1% better than a Volvo XC90 achieved the year prior. And I recently posted a small clip from a video I did about six months ago where I compared a, a small compact hatch to a large SUV for family use in a city. When you have children, you need to buy an SUV. There's no way you'd be able to do this in a big SUV. 
and it really kicked off on Instagram. Loads of people were going back and forth in the comments. Someone said, oh, SUVs are rubbish. They roll over in an accident. And then someone replied and said, I would never put my child in a small, tiny car like that. What if you got rear-ended? I'll stick with my massive SUV, please. And look, ultimately, I think a lot of what it comes down to with safety is perception. And look, here's the thing. Right? It's what you feel comfortable. If you as a parent feel more comfortable, more safe, more at ease, less anxious, if you are driving a brand new, huge two and a half ton you know, SUV, then look, you've got to do what feels right for your family. And I'm not criticizing that at all. There is obviously the valid argument that here in the UK, certainly it's a bit of an arms race at the moment with SUVs and families, you know, everybody trying to get the slightly bigger, slightly heavier one, you know, where does that end? But the other major aspect of safety when it comes to carrying your children in a car is child seats, which is why I have spent literally thousands of pounds on child seats since starting this channel, even more so if you go back before I started this channel. In the back of the car here, I have got the all-in-one free across Multimac child seat, which is incredible, you know, actually bolts and ratchet straps itself to the chassis of the car itself. It's absolutely incredible. And from very early on in this channel, Multimac have been fans and supporters of it, and they've never tried to influence anything that I do or say or put out, which I just think is incredibly cool. And then up the front here, I have got a belt secured Swedish plus tested child seat for my youngest. These seats really are a complete game changer when it comes to belt secured because it uses these tether straps which anchors the whole seat down to that seat itself and you can wobble this seat and the whole car wobbles with it and I really appreciate Axe Kid actually giving us a little bit of a discount on that seat as well because as I've already mentioned I've spent thousands on child seats so every little really helps and I'd love to make even more child seat content on this channel but honestly the child seat industry the automotive industry journalism everything they are so separate to child seats but here's a perfect example somebody has told me this that they've gone and bought a hundred hundred and fifty thousand pound brand new Porsche turned up to collect it they've unveiled their new Porsche and they also bought some child seats they opened up the back of the car and the child seats weren't in there where are my child seats Porsche oh they're over in the corner with the cellophane still on them yeah we don't touch them and look, this isn't just Porsche, it's other manufacturers I've heard from people as well, but there is such a disconnect when it comes to child seats and you know, everything else. And I'm experiencing that myself a little bit with you know, child seat manufacturers. But at the end of the day, no two cars are the same, no two child seats are the same, no two children are the same. So there is no one size fits all solution when it comes to child seats. I'm more than willing to hold my hands up and say that, you know, even 18 months ago at the start of this channel, there were things that I was doing with child seats, which whilst legal, you know, I've since learned that there are safer solutions. And I think this is part of the problem in the industry as well, is that, you know, it's the fear of making a mistake. Whereas, you know, with me, I'm never going to claim to be an expert, but what you're going to get from me is real world impartial honesty i promise you that and before we get onto the third and final objection against having an exciting car as a family car is probably the biggest and, and most valid objection as well you know but, but first why why does it matter why does it matter what car you drive you know if you're just getting your family from a to b why does it even matter and i think to demonstrate that i'm going to get all four kids in the car and we're going to go and do something fun right girls who wants to go to the fun fair me, me. not yeah. fun fair Arcade. Oh, and you want to go to the arcade, yeah? Okay, let's go for it, shall we? <laughs> Is that loud? No, it's not. Well, we've got to wait for the car to warm up first. Yeah. On the way to the bumpy fair, do you want to go on the bumpy road? Yeah. I've never done yeah. the bumpy road in this, in this yeah. grand sport. We've got yeah. all four of you, little pickles, in. I don't Baby's in the front. And the baby's in the front in an exciting car with your dad. Making memories. What do you think? Is this fun? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to hear some popcorn? Yeah. Popcorn. Are you ready? Listen. Oh, yeah. Popcorn. Can you hear the popcorn? Right, hang on. Look, we'll go out and do this and we'll make some noise here. Look, you ready? <laughs> That's one of the amazing things about these Maseratis, you know, the Grand Sport, the Grand Turismo in particular, is that, you know, just then I'm driving actually slower than other people in a lower gear and it's just so exciting and so much drama, isn't it? <laughs> a 
beautiful oh, day. Oh, oh, dear girls, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous about going on this bumpy road now. Oh, right, we're going to put it in sport. So the adaptive dampers are in their firmer setting. Are you ready? Yeah. Right. Right, no crying if you get scared because it's too bumpy, okay? Oh, I got it. Oh. <laughs> what do you think? That's just the first one. There's more coming. Oh, no. oh. Look at all the scratches on the tar back. People have bottomed out on this so many times. Oh. Oh. You know what this isn't as bad? It's it's more bumpy on this road in Mummy's SUV, isn't it? You know, because the whole thing just kind of like yeah, just keeps going yeah. like this, doesn't it? Whereas where we're in sport mode, it's actually kind of yeah. hugging the road. Yeah. Going out here yeah. in a dad car. What a beautiful day. Uh oh. Uh oh. A bridge. No, no, no. Tall high bridge. No, no, no. We're gonna have to go over it. No, are you scared? Uh oh. A cave. Uh -oh. Deep dark cave. You have to go through it. We're out, we're out. <laughs> Look at it from the outside. You'd never think you'd be able to get four children in here, would you? Look, uh oh, it's the sea. The cold, wavy sea. We're going to have to go. Over the bridge, yeah. Ready? Whoa! What do you think? I don't know where it is. Where? Oh, I don't know. Right, turn around and go back. Right, go around. Yeah. Oh, I don't know where it is, girls. Where? 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 Which way are we going? Where? 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 Oh, here. Where? Oh, hang on. Oh, I'm getting a bit dizzy now. Hang on. Right, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, sorry everybody. I got confused. I'm sorry. Right, here we go. Here we are, yeah? Down here. Oh, which way is it? Is it over there? No. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going, girl. Go through those gates. Let's cut to a very swift montage. <laughs> this is actually a top tip for dads. You know mums with change bags, they have massive change bags that are like the size of that a hiker would take to go and climb Mount Everest. I don't know what they put in it. Me, never needed a change bag. I just have a bum bag, look. Got a napkin here, wipes, bits and pieces. That's all you need. Is that nice, sweetie? <laughs> would it have been a lot of fun if I'd taken my four children down to the fun fair in my wife's X5 or in a Citroen C4? Yeah, it would still would have been a lovely day, you know. It would have been a nice, fun, lovely, memorable day. But you can't tell me it would have been as memorable as it was in this. When I was a kid, I can remember speaking to my brother when I was like six, seven, eight years old, saying, when we grow up, we're gonna have exciting cars like this. We're not gonna be boring like all the adults, are we? We're gonna have exciting cars. Because let's face it, being an adult is boring, isn't it? You know, you kind of learn when you become an adult, oh, you know, all of the things that you think as a child, you know, that you can do in your life, well, no, you can't. <laughs> when you grow up, your priorities change and you can't do all those exciting things. You've got to live a boring, sensible life. So I'm willing to admit that that is a big reason why I love having exciting cars. But like you just saw then, the, the reason I can justify it and what actually I get the most enjoyment out of now is using these cars as much as possible to make memories with your family. And I can honestly say, despite having loads of exciting, cool cars throughout my 20s before I had children, I can honestly say that the most treasured memories I've ever made in an exciting car has been when I've had my children in the car with me. So let's get on to that final objection, number three. And you know, probably the most valid one that I occasionally get and I see in the comments below. You know, it's people saying, 
Must be nice. Not everyone can afford to do that. But it is kind of fair enough though, yeah? Because not everybody can, can afford no. um, to buy a nice cars like this. But here's the thing, it, it's subjective. <laughs> because obviously there's people right across the spectrum of <laughs> wealth, isn't there? So I've had people on my videos before sort of saying that, oh yeah, must be nice to have a Maserati, must be nice to have a Aston Martin. But I've also had people who are presumably a lot more wealthy than what I am, who are kind of making comments saying that this car is rubbish and that it's, it's nowhere near as exciting as what you're making out. It's actually just an old rubbish car that nobody wants. You should kind. get something. That's not kind as well, is it? So you, you can't win with this thing. Personally for me though, girls, if ever I see somebody who's got something that I can't get at the moment, I, what that, that doesn't make me feel grumpy. That makes me feel inspired. It makes me want to do more practicing so that I can do that thing or I can get that thing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I strongly believe that there are exciting dad cars to be had at every budget. You know, prior to this, I had an Aston Martin DB9, which was worth double what this car is. But driving that car around with my children wasn't twice as fun. Those memories aren't twice as good as the memories that I've made in this car. And I'm putting my money where my mouth is here. That's why I'm doing my trading down series. You know, I sold the Aston to buy this, to free up the cash to continue focusing on this channel. I'll be selling this car very, very soon and then buying something which is sub 15 grand, then something which is sub 10 grand, and then sub five grand. And then I will eventually end up in a 1,000 pound exciting dad car. And I believe that I'll still be able to find something which ticks all of these boxes, does all of this stuff, still exciting for £1,000. But it's not all about purchase price, is it? It's also the running costs. Yeah, and I'm aware that we're very fortunate that we've got my wife's car as well. So if we're going on a long run, well, we, we have to go in her car so we can all fit in it. And although the fuel economy is not actually that good in the X5, it is twice as good as this Maserati. But if you don't have the budget to run a V8, I understand, it's very expensive. But then, for example, you know, recently one of my favourite cars that we reviewed on the channel was the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. Incredible car. But if you've got to do over 12,000 miles a year and a long commute to work each day, you know, a Quadrifoglio is not very practical, is it? But I reckon the Giulia 2.2 diesel will still be a cool car. I've not driven one yet, but speaking to people, you know, it still looks amazing, doesn't it? But if for you, you really would love to have like an M3 or an M5, well, why don't you just get like a three series or a five series of the generation that you like. You know, still very cool cars. I do believe, honestly, that every budget, there is an exciting dad car. And so in summary, if the fact that you're gonna be a parent soon or you already are a parent is the thing that's preventing you from buying an exciting car because you think you need something practical. You know, honestly, think about it. It's very rare that we use, you know, even half the capacity of my wife's X5. Do you really need a massive boot? If you're leaning towards buying a brand new crossover simply on the assumption that it's going to be a safer thing for your family you know all i would say is also really look into child seats as well because it can make a huge difference on general safety you know depending on what child seat you're using or if you're hesitating because it has to be the top end fastest model or nothing you know honestly stop being stubborn and have a look at you know something that you can comfortably afford i genuinely think there are gems at every budget thank you all for watching subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you on the next one Bye-bye.